as you can see it's a beautiful autumn morning and I've parked up here at Yew Tree Tarn and that's home fell behind us where we're going to go so while I finish my coffee and put my rucksack and uh, boots on let's have a look at the route that we're going to do today For this walk, we're going to do Home Fell, which lies just to the west of the A593 between Ambleside and Coniston. From the car park at Yew Tree Tarn, we'll head south through the woods to Glen Mary Bridge, before heading west past Yew Tree Farm to Shepherd's Bridge, and then we'll pick up the minor road that heads up past Raven Crag, past Home Ground, and that'll take us to Hodge Close Quarry. From there, we head south past the reservoirs up to the summit of Ivy Crag, from where we'll head west to Home Fell Summit. Then we'll head north through Usdale Gap and down through the trees, which will take us back to the start. If you do park in this car park, do take care as you get out of the car, because it's a very busy road, the A593 between Coniston and Ambleside and you have to cross the road to the other side. Do take the path through the wood, as it means you will avoid walking alongside the busy road. Yew Tree Farm is probably one of the most iconic farm buildings in the district, and you'll often see it as a subject of photographs and paintings. Passing the farm, we take the quiet lane that heads towards Shepherd's Bridge. Shepherd's Bridge spans Udale Beck and it's a delightful little spot. I might return here one day to do a sketch, but in the meantime, we'll carry on up along the road. That's Raven Crag up on our right, and at this time of year, the colours are looking absolutely wonderful. It's been a quite straightforward walk along the road but you'll come to this gate after a short time. If you go through that gate, there's a footpath and that will take you directly to the summit. But I don't want to do that. I want to carry on along our planned route and we'll walk along the road towards Hodge Close Quarry. One of the reasons that I like walking along these lanes and, uh, and not necessarily heading, dashing straight up to the summit of any fells these days is that I'm always on the lookout for good painting subjects. Wherever possible I like to paint and do a, a, a sketch outdoors but time doesn't always allow it so when I come across a scene I'll take a few photographs and look at them not as a quality photograph but as a reference for a future painting and this is one of those scenes as I've just come along the lane you can see the cottage at the end of the lane and then this tree on the right casting this lovely shadow across the road and in my mind I'll take the photograph and I can already think that there's a potential for a painting there when I get it done I don't know but at least it's there it's logged in and I've got the reference for future but that's what I'm looking for these days not necessarily just ticking off fells
Well, this is a change of plan. I've got to the car park at um, Hodge Close Quarry. And as you can see, there's a lot of vehicles here because they're making a, a film. Um, they're filming in the Lake District a bit at the minute here and over at Bleetown, which will be on for a couple of days. But if you come here normally, this would be a car park that you could park up or you could walk up to here. And then you'll see just where we're heading now, Hodge Close Quarry, the famous quarry is, is right down below us. So we might get a shot down here, but we'll just skip by that. There's nothing to see in filmmaking, no big stars. Well, there might be, but I wouldn't recognize them. We'll have a look down here into the quarry. The trees are growing up now, so you don't get a very clear view down into the whole of the quarry from here. But it is worth exploring if you're in this area. Right, let's head up through the woods and on up towards the reservoirs. It's a clear path up through the woods, and as you get to this point with the wall on the right, we turn left. If we carried on and followed the wall, we would end up at that gate that we saw previously. These reservoirs, of which there are two, are part of the quarry. The water was used to operate a funicular to raise slate up to ground level. It's such a nice place to stop, especially, I, I haven't been up here on as good a day as this. The colours are just fantastic and the water here is flat calm, a couple of clouds in the sky. So no hurry, may as well sit and have a cup of coffee. Once I've had this, what we'll do is we're going to head up towards the summit, but we'll go to Ivy Crag first, which is the lower summit, and then up to the Wainwright summit of Homefell. But I'm in no hurry. Hopefully I'll get some sketching done today, but no problem if I don't. It's just such a glorious day to be out, isn't it? It is boggy in places, there's no denying it, especially now in the autumn and in the winter it'll be the same. But when you get views like that over there, you can't really complain. And this is Ivy Crag. It's a fine viewpoint in its own right. 
with the Langdale Pikes dominating the scene away over there. But it's not the highest point. The highest point of the fell is over there on that ridge. And that's where we're going to go to now, just by going across the dip in the middle, up a little bit of a scrambly bit on that rock face, and then up to the top. As you approach from Ivy Crag towards the summit, your way looks barred by this escarpment of rock. And there doesn't seem to be much of a route, but there is. Just almost at the, on the left hand side there, you can see a green path that goes up through the rocks. And that's the way we're heading. By going round to the left to the right, you can avoid this short bit of scrambling, but it's good fun. And there's nothing difficult. And then up onto the grass, you're confronted by this small outcrop of rock with a tumble down cairn on it. To your right or north is another pointy bit of rock with no cairn. But we're going to head south in the direction of Conison Water to the actual highest point of the fell. This is the top of Home Fell. Now, it is, it is a little bit confusing because I would say that there's several tops on Home Fell, quite a few knuckles of rock which could lay claim to the title of the highest point. But the one that we're sitting on now is actually the surveyed highest point of the fell. In front of us there, you might just be able to make out two other knolls of rock there's only half a metre difference between the height of this and those other two, but it's very deceptive. And then of course there's Ivy Crag. Now, when Wainwright was looking at doing the pictorial guides, the 214, he didn't actually include Home Fell on his first two lists. And there's probably a good reason for that, because Ivy Crag was the only spot height or uh, triangulation point on the whole of the fell and that was measured at 995. And if Wainwright had any criteria at all for inclusion in the Wainwright Fells, it was the 1,000 feet altitude. So 995 didn't make the cut. But on his large scale map, the six inch map, he could see that not only was that a spot height at 995, there was a benchmark here, just on the rock in between us here, at 1,000 and 27 feet, so he knew it was over a thousand feet. That's why when you look in the pictorial guide, he approximated the height of this fell at 1,040 feet, because he took the height of the benchmark and guessed how high the highest point of the fell was. But in writing about Home Fell, Wainwright classes this as one of the loveliest in Lakeland. And it is, it's low, it's second lowest of the whole list, but it's a lovely fell to be on. I mean, look at the day we're on today. It's absolutely beautiful. Why would you want to be anywhere else? The mixture of heather, birch trees, deciduous trees changing color, the reservoir, all these sort of things just add to a lovely little fell for an afternoon or a short walk out. The views are tremendous. I can see Ingleborough way over there, and then right round to the Howgill Fells, Far Eastern Fells, Eastern Fells, the Helvellyn Range there and Fairfield Range, and then the Langdale Pikes and Wetherland behind me. Beautiful. 
So I'm going to sit and have my lunch, maybe do a bit of sketching, and then we'll take it from there. I'm in no hurry to get off the fell on a day like this. The weather conditions today are remarkable. There is hardly a breath of wind. It's really quite warm here on my shoulder. I'm probably overdressed. And the clarity is amazing. I can see loads of fells right over to, you know, the distant fells way behind me. In front of me is the Langdale Pikes, and to my left is Weatherham, which is dominating the scene. So I'll have to take a photograph of that for a potential painting. But I did see a nice little scene as I was coming down off the highest point, just to my left here. Unfortunately, it's in shade, but I'm gonna go back there and I'm gonna do a little watercolor painting and it will take me about half an hour. And then hopefully if it's any good, I'll show it to you. And then we'll move on with the rest of the walk for the day. It will be too long winded to show you the process of doing the watercolor painting, but I have all the kit and Bailey's happy enough. He's just lying here, just out of view. And um, he'll be happy enough just to Sit while I paint. Catch up with you in a minute. Well, I was able to sit down and do a, a quick watercolour sketch, but in the 40 minutes that it took, the light has changed quite dramatically. There's much more cloud around now. When I started the sketch, there was some lovely light on the Langdales, shadow on the top and then light on the fell side, but it's totally flat light now. But I was able to capture the the scene as I wanted it, this little view in between this this gap here. And so I did this watercolour sketch. It's not brilliant, but it's just lovely to sit out and actually sketch plain air outside. And I use this as a reference when I come to do a painting, if I come to do a painting back in the studio. Yeah, it's clouded over. So what we're gonna do is we're going to head down now um, off the top of the fell into a place called Uskdale Gap and then we'll head right, which will take us down back to, down to Utree Farm, back to the car. We're taking the easier route to get off the summit by heading north and then past the other top and go down the zigzag path that will take us to Ostale Gap. There are no scrambly bits on this route. And this is Uskdale Gap. Ivy crags up on our right, and then over that way is an outcrop of rock. You can see the Langdale Pikes way behind us. There's a small cairn and a broken down wall, but the path's really good. And all we have to do is now continue on down the path, down the steep side of the hill, and that'll take us directly back to U Tree Tarn. And a cup of tea. The only thing really of note as you're coming down through the trees and on the path is this massive boulder which lies just to the lower side of the path. There's a couple of others here and you can see there's another massive one up on the fell. There's another couple up in the trees there and it must have fallen off the crag at some time. And you've got to think how lucky it was that they didn't land on the footpath there. Eh? Still a nice evening, just a shame about the light. Never mind, back to the car.
passing through a gate. The route takes you along the north end of Yew Tree Town and through this really impressive stand of tall trees. I think they're Douglas fir, but they're fine specimens. Looks more like a film set. And then keeping to the edge of the town, the path brings us back to the lay-by and the car. Well, that's the end of that walk. And what an enjoyable walk it was for me anyway. Beautiful autumn colours, sunshine was just perfect. And it's a shame that the light didn't last until the, the end of the afternoon. But that's how it is. <laughs> In the Lake District you can't guarantee on the weather. But yeah, nice circular walk. You could probably do it in a couple of hours, no problem at all. And um, a rather enjoyable day. As I say, one of the lowland fells, but enjoyable nonetheless. So now I'll get the kettle on, have a cup of tea. Sounds like Bailey's ready for his tea. As ever, if you've enjoyed the film, just click the like button down here on the bottom corner. And even better, why not subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, because I'll be posting more films shortly. But once again, thanks for watching.